let's uh, get cracking then. Ball doc today, how's he? Yeah, obviously he picked up a, well, I don't pick anything up, we're just, we're not being overly cautious with him, we just want to give him the chance to, to play. Obviously we want him fit, we want him available, so yeah, hopefully he'll be okay. Like I said, we've done everything we can after the game, we've had a couple more days. Uh, we had uh, the Sunday off, trained Monday, then had yesterday off, so, you know, he didn't train Monday and then hopefully now we've done the right things by him. So there's a chance he might be available then for, for Forrest then? Any other new concerns for the match on Friday? No, we've done similar with Connor as well. Done similar with Connor. Um, and again, he's been on the grass, so hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully, touch wood, with them uh, sort of lighter three days, if you like, have uh, allowed a couple of bodies to recover and just refresh. I was going to say, for the first time in a while, you've actually had a few days. It's not been game, game, game. So how beneficial has that been? Yeah, I hope so. Um, Let's say it's not really enough time to, to really rest physically. It's, it's six days, but we've, we've certainly tried to use it. And I think how we have tried to use it is, is psychologically. We've just come off the players a little bit in terms of my approach with them, the staff's approach with them. It was just to get them away with the family on the Sunday, come in and have a good day, fun day on the Monday, not thinking about football, not thinking about Millwall, not thinking about Forest. Another day off yesterday, and then we've... Um, got straight back into the routine today. So hopefully everyone just feels that little bit uh, recharged, if you like, and, and ready to go. So fatigue then, when you're thinking about your team for Friday, is still quite a significant issue then? So, so as, you, as you're thinking about your team for Friday, fatigue is still still a big issue then? No, not really. Not really. And it, it's, it's, it's not been, it's been, I think, uh, it's been more about protecting players from things they're carrying. Um, not fatigue, we're always going to be tired and we, we, a schedule now means we're going to be playing two games a week. So it's, you get used to it, rest, recover, play, you know, and um, we'll, we'll continue to that. So no, not, not bother about anything to do with that. You, um, you were talking recently about the resurgence in fitness, so to speak, or the improved fitness of Berger and Gibbs-White. When, how far, sort of in layman's terms, really, how far are they away from being able to play you know, week in, week out, I suppose. Yeah, I think I'm hoping they're there. Like say, we've Morgan. I'm not really worried about because he's got history of doing that, and uh, he was only out six weeks. Um, Sander, obviously, over the last couple of years, has, has had his own problems, which he's been battling through and working really hard. And I think we, we want to do a, do right by him. Obviously, we want to win every game and. Uh, but we want to do right by him as well at the same time because he's going to be an important player for us between now and the end of the season. And you see with the numbers we've got left, we sort of in that mindset with a lot of players. You know, we need to protect them, but we need them on the pitch. Um, but I've got no concerns whatsoever now with, with Sander and, and where he is physically and how he's been training. He's, he's consistently now been on the grass training. He's consistently now been available to play and played a lot of games and a lot of 90s. Um, Played two games in a week, that type of thing. So if you're gonna, if someone was overseeing his uh, return back, just purely in terms of a medical point of view, he's, he's gradually ticked up, ticked all the boxes. So for me, he's fine. I suppose with that area of the team, it's about balance now, isn't it? If somebody happens to have the type of performance that Berger did and Fleck did, say against Blackburn, and and managing that so that they are so that they are continually fresh then, doesn't it? Rather than saying, having to drop on a combination week in, week out. Yeah, we, yeah we've had a couple of real good performances lately and, and certain players have been part of that, we know that. But yeah, it's, I think the change, we were going to change. So for the Millwall game, we're certainly going to change to a three, three at the top and try and cause them problems. Um, and that was a game plan, but we, but we didn't. We, we simply didn't, whether that was Millwall defending, whether that, that was us not getting the ball into the front men quick enough, not being bright enough. But I think even when we did that, when we did move the ball quick, we still didn't create as many chances as we normally do, as we'd like to do and we, and we expect to do. So, yeah, that, that was the, the reason for the change in that game. But, um, as I said, it's handy to have within game, but from game to game we may change it. I was going to say, I mean, did you think upon reflection that those changes 
had more of an impact on the team than you thought, or maybe it was an application thing rather than anything else? Yeah, no, I wouldn't question the application. We know, so physically our data, that's that's the, the lowest or one of the lowest physical outputs we've had all season, you know, so... I'm not going to use the word, you, you said fatigued, it's irrelevant, but mentally you can be fatigued, you know, you think you're working hard you are, and you are giving your best, but it's just not there or not in your legs or whatever. And um, listen, there, there would be a point when that happens, we know that, we know that, but our job now is to make sure that we don't get that again and, and everything in terms of our physical outputs are up there in terms of levels we expect and where we have been when we've been winning. Uh, Illiman and Jai had has had some great moments this season, hasn't he? What does he need to do in his development to be more consistent? I think that's it. Just he's, he's learning at the, the thick end. Like you look at Illy's background, where he's come from, um, the experiences he's had. Um, he's still a baby in terms of his development. You know, not being in academy systems, <clears throat> the levels in massive jump. And I think even on Saturday, probably it's a great example for me of where he's at. Uh, there's moments there where everyone can see he looks a fantastic player, how he handles the ball, how he moves the ball, how brave he is to get on the ball. Um, but it's funny, we've just had the conversation this morning. It's, it's not about looking good, though, it's about being good, you know, and we've got to get a winning team, and that's always my thought. Um, so for me, the only thing that's been missing in his performance lately is possibly the goals. So when he's had those big chances, if he took the goals, who knows, he may be the, the, the one who's down on the team sheet first because, there's, there's, like I said, it's tough to criticise someone who works very hard and who want, is always brave to take the ball. I suppose in that sense, that comparisons will perhaps naturally be drawn with the product that Gibbs White is bringing to the team in terms of goals and where Illiman can, can be thinking about doing better. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And listen, we've used them in the same team this season as well to good effect and... You know, when we have played three up there and there's been a nine and those two around them, it's been brilliant. We've, we've really enjoyed that. So I think there's certainly a place for both. Um, we've even had Illiman up top and Morgan as one of the midfield three. So, yeah, there's certainly a place for both. But if we were talking back about us playing a midfield three with two attacking players ahead of them, then probably only one of them's going to play. So again, we know all we know all the options and again, that's that competition that we're after and if, if Morgan's um, going to set a benchmark, he's setting a hell of a good one for Illiman to see. For a lot of fans, strikers are judged on goals, so you won't be surprised to learn that one of the talking points this week has been Ollie McBurney. How does he get himself into a position where he's not toiling anymore and he's back amongst the goals? Just Obviously, it's game time. Get him on the pitch and he'll score goals. His, his record suggests that. We all know that. We've all seen him do it. Um, but I can't just leave him on the pitch for him to score goals, you know. He, he's got a role to play, he's done fantastic, he's, he's done great. Uh, he has had chances and if he'd have took them again, we'd have been talking about something totally different. Uh, but he's not. But I'm not concerned about him, not concerned about that. I see him every day now and what he's doing. And um, there's only one thing you can do, which is knuckle down, work hard to get on the pitch and keep fighting and fighting for those chances. And when one comes, one will drop. And who knows what's going to happen then? I suppose it's that um, idea that obviously forwards have to bring so many different elements to the game, but they're only really judged on one thing. So defensive clearances, it's thanks very much, but it's up at the other end where it kind of really matters. <laughs> and no one's uh, as aware of that as, as Ollie. Like he, I think when we'd, we'd drawn against Hull at home, he was beating himself up over it. But... We were happy with lots of things he did and, you know, some of the chances he got probably the only one would have got on the end of him. I think in particular a couple of headers in the box, um, a couple of saves from the goalkeeper where he just hit him. Um, and they're big moments if, if you let them be big, you know. So that could have just quite have easily gone a different way and I'm aware of that and I've tried to make Ollie aware of that. And um, that's it. If, if he keeps getting in positions and getting in those chances, then they'll, they'll fall. And then it's a different story. I realise I'm feeding one argument into another here, but in terms of his development, then where where is Jebison in being involved in the in the first? Well, he's obviously on the bench a lot, but involved in the first team picture and maybe getting that start. Well, he's got to get past them. Simple, simple, simple as that. We we'll look at was he form. Bill's been doing great, scoring goals. Morgan, as you've just spoke about, Illiman and Ollie Mack, and Jebo's in amongst that. Jebo does offer something different <coughs> in terms of if. 
uh, listen, if you think back to when I used him in the Premier League and uh, the role he played as that nine really stretching the game and pressing um, and really making sure that we used, when we defended or when we are in the mid-third of the pitch, that we use his energy to exploit that space in behind and if he didn't get it, he'd make space then for our tens. We haven't had many games set up like that for him this season and, and that is a difference in this league. Um, but in terms of Jebo's development, that's not a bad thing because he's having to work on a hell of a lot of things and, and realise and develop other parts of his game. So, yeah, we he played yesterday in the 23s and did great, scored a goal, worked well with Willisula and we're really pleased with him. So, yeah, there's a lot, there's lots of work still going on with Jebo, without a doubt, but and he's certainly in the picture. As you said, you, we've just spoke about four of the strikers there and each one of them is different. So let's move on to the match then, shall we? Put this match in context for seasons and the ambitions that you have this year against Forest. How big is this? I'd just add a line it to uh, similar to the Blackburn game. Home game for us against a good side, uh, a side that's been in good form and, uh, and, and who are dangerous, dangerous team. So... I'd, I'd put it in right up there with that in terms of our approach. Um, it's, it's a home game, so we want to win. We want to try and win, but we have to uh, we respect and understand that threat that's in front of us, which is Forest, and, and they're a dangerous team, and especially on the counter. So it's going to be, a, I think, it's going to be another good spectacle. Yeah, Spence and Johnson are particularly key to all of that. They are going to be big features of this match, aren't they? And, and stopping them, I suppose. Yeah, they are. They've done well. They've done well, um, and you see a lot of their like a lot of their games. A lot of the threat comes down the right hand side. A lot of the threats on the counter. But they've got a hell of a lot of other good players as well. You know, from the set plays. Um, well, uh, Davis now physical presence at the top end of the pitch. Whoever's played the tens contributed. Whether it's been chances and goals. So we know uh, we know what we're up against. And like I said, it'd be silly for us to just play five left-siders to stop there too and leave the rest of the pitch. So whilst we understand what threat they pose, like I said, we're at home and it's about us trying to win. If, if there are any similarities, and look, come back at me if you think these are the loosest similarities, it's the fact that with you and this group and Steve Cooper and the group they've assembled there, there hasn't been many personnel changes, yet the team have revolutionised themselves across the season, haven't they? Is that fair? Yeah, and I, I spoke all the time about sometimes it's it's nothing to do with it's uh, it's the environment you can create or it's the uh, the message it's that that's what it is and it's not always as simple as the manager it's not always as simple as the players it's everything combined and I put everyone involved in that the staff the fans you know, the club the self everything. Um, I think the bit where if you're the manager if the more influence you can have over all those things the better. But sometimes you can't, and, and so then you may ignore certain aspects and just go after the players in the football. So I'm not sure what Steve's had to do in there, what he has done in there, but he's done a good job and made him, a, a, like I said, a really dangerous team. So it's, uh, as I said, similar to Blackburn, another big game. They, they'll approach it the same way as well. There's no point as, uh, you know, shying away from it. They'll be coming here thinking they're coming to a, a tough place. It's going to be tough for them to get a result, so they'll be an approach in a certain way. It may be sitting deep and countering, it may be slowing the game down for straighteners, it may be surprising us and coming after us on the front foot, and we, we're just guessing. So that's why I keep going back when we keep saying we, we want to be prepared and know how to deal with different things that teams might throw at us, because as and when within a game, they'll just change. Can't help but feel that perhaps similar to Blackburn, which you've already mentioned, West Brom too as well, given where uh, Sheffield United are in the table and the other teams, of course, that you're facing in the next two and the timing of the season, there's, there's an extra element of event to this one. It's it's perhaps a bit more important. Uh, yeah, I don't... Not to me. It maybe feels it. <clears throat> and then, like, when you get towards the back end of the season and, like I said, then the results do matter and you're not playing for any more points... Then they're big and there's a different feel, but right now there's not. We're just playing a good side, a team that want to take points off. Um, but that's had to be our approach since day one because we were far, we were quite a long way behind. Do you know what I mean? So there was a bit, there was an element of, come on, it's now or never. Um, so we've sort of always had that mindset, and and 
that probably won't change. There'll probably be no different feel to any of our games now between now and the end of the season because we've had to sort of approach them that way anyway. I was going to, yeah, so it's still then perhaps what have you got to lose having come from where you came from? Yeah, and, and but that bit, and again, that's a mentality. If we ever go into a game scared, we're going to be worried about, you know, we don't want to make a mistake instead of who's going to win us this game. So it's always about who's going to win us this game, how we're going to win this game. And um, and and like I said, I can't see that changing, even if we were up and around the top end, and you know this team's chasing us. We've still got to pick up points, so that's our approach to picking up points.